In today's video, we're going to be discussing a defenseman that should be a target for the Toronto Maple Leafs, according to some of the Sportsnet staff. Instead of Eric Carlson, who we discussed the other day, could the Oilers be making a trade at the forward position? The Boston Bruins are facing a ton of backlash for the Mitchell Miller signing. The Global Series is now wrapped up in Finland. Lots of injury and roster moves as well. All that coming up next. So welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. As I mentioned, we get a variety of NHL news and some trade talk to take a look at today. Uh, first up, the Global Series has wrapped up over in Finland. The Avalanche in the Blue Jackets, of course, has been over there for the past few days. They've played two games. It's now uh, all in the books, and the Avalanche won both games rather handily. They won 5-1 to one today in a bit of a landslide. Yesterday's game was a little closer. The Jackets did have a good flurry there to make it interesting, ultimately losing 6-3. to three. So, of course, the Avalanche players from Finland, like uh, Mikko Rantanen and Arturi Lekkonen, both had great time. Of course, uh, Line himself and with the uh, Jackets did score a big goal as well. So, nice to see some of the Finnish players, uh, you know, having a chance to uh, contribute. And of course, Corpus Allo was in goal for the uh, Jackets today as well. Uh, but the Jackets are having a pretty hardcore struggle here to start the season. I believe they're now in the basement, if I'm not mistaken, of the NHL with a record of 3-9. and nine. So that's not where the team envisioned itself. I can't imagine, especially after signing Johnny Gaudreau to the uh, one of the bigger free agent contracts and one of the big surprise signings of the free agent period. Uh, of course, I, I can just imagine what they're going through here right now. There's been some talk about some changes. I don't know if it's fair to say the head coach is in trouble or not. Uh, I think it's fair to say that the, the roster is not as good as it might have been hoped to be. Um, I know a lot of people predicted them to still be near the bottom of their division. I did as well. Um, but I don't know if they predicted themselves to be this bad. I really thought they would be a little stronger. So we'll see. I'd be curious to see after all these losses if something has to give here and we don't see some kind of either a trade, coaching change, something to shake things up in Columbus here in the near future. Now, of course, we had a pretty significant waiver claim today. The Washington Capitals have claimed Nicholas Obey-Kubel on waivers from the Toronto Maple Leafs. Of course, Obey-Kubel was placed on waivers yesterday after appearing in six games. The Leafs had been a healthy scratch a few times. They placed him on waivers yesterday. And as I mentioned yesterday, I really thought there was a high probability he was going to get claimed and he was in Washington I believe I even mentioned I thought that would be a good team because we were also talking about the Capitals um, that had, had been rumored to be having some trade talk with Montreal because they have a ton of extra forwards uh, to move that they have two or three that they like to get off the roster Washington has had them dropping like flies due to injuries so it makes sense that maybe they would have some conversations but I mentioned Obey Kubel would be very much appealing. Uh, like I said, he's not a guy that's going to get you a ton of points, but he's got a Stanley Cup on his resume. A good skater, good bottom six forward for the most part. I know his brief time in Toronto didn't exactly go as planned, but I'm surprised that the Leafs, um, they made him a, such a priority signing, signing him on the first day of free agency, this one-year, $1 million deal, uh, where some of their other bottom six pieces came together a little bit later. Uh, you know, And after six games, I realized maybe they weren't his best six games, but it just seems like a really small sample size to give up on a player that it appears like they really want it going into the UFA period. Um, and now again, which has been a recurring thing for the Leafs the past two, three years, they tend to lose a lot of players on waivers because they have so much money tied up in their most expensive, most elite players that the supporting cast is generally, for the most part, you know, shorter term deals uh, that they need to kind of ref kind of refine them basically every year, these deals to make everything kind of jive and to put together a good roster. And Obey Kubel looked like a great signing on paper, but again, they lose another player to the waiver bar. So we'll, we'll see how he works out in Washington. He should be able to get a bigger opportunity, bigger role there given the amount of injuries that they have been dealing with. Now, as I mentioned, the Boston Bruins and the Mitchell Miller signing is absolutely blowing up in their face today. Uh, it started already yesterday when the news broke. Lots of backlash, lots of you know negative reactions, you could say, and it just continued today. Um, I do honestly wonder, I seriously wonder if there's any chance for Mitchell Miller to really honestly play in the NHL. And I think the Bruins just did a, a major damage to their reputation here by even considering signing this player. Now, I know Don Sweeney himself even said that, you know, they had some concerns and they wondered if it was the right thing to do. But at the end of the day, other teams were interested. So if somebody else was going to sign them, why not the Bruins? Well, it's because of this kind of reaction exactly. I mean, even Don Sweeney talked to a lot of their veteran players and they were not 
impressed with the idea either. I mean, Patrice Bergeron spoke today. I heard Nick Foligno. Uh, Bergeron said he was kind of on the fence but wasn't crazy about it. He said it goes against everything they've built in their culture during his tenure there in the Bruins organization. Um, you know, he said essentially if, if the same player – walked into their dressing room now that, you know, there, there was no change, for example. It's still the same kind of 14-year-old kid that had made massive errors and got himself into some big trouble before. And he wouldn't be welcomed at all, uh, you know, flat out. I mean, Nick Felino said it was tough for the players to swallow when they heard of the signing. Uh, they said in the past week they were asked their opinion. Uh, and even with the negative reaction of the players, they still went ahead. Even Gary Bettman weighed in on this as well today. Of course, he's over for the Global Series overseas, and uh, he was asked about it, and he said that the Bruins uh, did not discuss this signing with a head office at all. Um, they certainly had their concerns, and he said that as of right now, Mitchell, Mitchell Miller is not eligible to play in the NHL. So they said they're at free will to sign him if they wish, but he had, and obviously to sign him to play in another league. So... I do wonder, I would think that their goal here is to probably get him into the American Hockey League. Now, yesterday, I do want to correct something as well. When I was talking about Mitchell Miller yesterday, I said that he had a big season last year in the NCAA. That's not correct. He wasn't playing in the NCAA. He was playing in the USHL, uh, so that was my mistake. I'm not sure why I said NCAA. I didn't know where he was, uh, but for some reason, I just said the wrong uh, the wrong league. But at the end of the day, you know, he hasn't played yet this year, so... Um, they want to get him playing, obviously, if he's going to be a member of their organization. And generally, between the uh, the minor leagues to the NHL, like the NHL, the AHL, the ECHL, if you're not welcome, you're suspended in one league, then you, the, the other leagues don't generally let you play there either. Now, I don't really know if it's fair to say he's considered a, a suspended NHL player. I, I'm not really sure, but Bettman called him ineligible. So, if he's ineligible there, I would think the American Hockey League will probably take the same stance. If they do, they might have a hard time getting this guy even to play somewhere. They might have to find a team or a league over in Europe or something. I don't really don't know. But, I mean, I've seen numerous scenarios online with fans contacting the Bruins with their uh, writing their email letters stating how upset and uh, you know, mad they are over this uh, signing. Uh, so the, the fans are outraged. Media is not happy about it. They're giving the Bruins a hard time. The players were not happy about it. The NHL wasn't overly thrilled about it. I uh, just don't understand why they felt the need to do this. Even Bettman said not only is he not eligible today, he can't say with any certainty that he'll ever be eligible. Uh, so they're going to want to see a lot from this Mitchell Miller guy before he can ever step foot in the NHL, which it's debatable if that's ever even going to happen. So I, I really don't know why the Bruins did this. It was a really poorly made decision, in my opinion. They had so many people telling them it wasn't a good idea, yet Don Sweeney and Cam Neely moved ahead anyway. So uh, they're getting a ton of backlash, and it is all well-earned. Of course, they're also in Toronto tonight to play the Toronto Maple Leafs. So, of course, this signing comes right, you know, as they're entering the uh, Leafland, which is from a media standpoint and hockey standpoint, you know, one of the largest markets in the league. But then the media, like a lot of the national media is, in Canada at least, is, you know, based out of Toronto. So, you, you, you know that anytime you're in Toronto to play the Leafs, like there's tons of media, tons of questions, tons of scrutiny. Something like this goes down. It's going to be amplified that much more. So, it's just really a total disaster here. Um, I really hope that maybe there's a possibility we'll see that the Bruins avoid the contract or something I'm not sure what they can do but certainly like I said we also heard from the victim's mother from the kid that he um, had her you know really basically tortured according to the mother for several years like we heard of one incident which uh, he ended up you know running into legal trouble over but his mother says it wasn't an isolated incident that he had tortured her child for years um, you know, that's to me, that's not, that's not a mistake. Like, that's something you, you think about, you plan it out. Like, you know, for him to take like one of those candy push pops or whatever it was and like to rub it all around a urinal and like get this kid to lick it. Like, that is so gross and so disgusting. Like, to me, that's not something that just happens on a whim. Like, this guy, I, I know he was 14 and I understand teenagers screw up and they make mistakes. In a lot of cases, they deserve second chances. But I tell you, like, the fact that he was using racial slurs and torturing his kid the way he did, 
if it was my own kid, I, I honestly don't know like how easily I could get past that. Like that, that is so tough and so disgusting and just so terrible on so many levels. That I, I don't know. I, I really have my doubts that Mitchell Miller is going to be able to do enough to overcome the public opinion that he's faced right now. And uh, I'm not sure the NHL is ever going to let him play. We'll see, I guess, but um, I don't know. Uh, Bruins are, are getting a ton of bad PR, and it's all rightly deserved right now. Uh, On to some injury updates. Staying with the Bruins for a moment. They are getting David Krejci back. He's supposed to return this evening. Uh, so that'll be a good boost for them. Not that they really need it because they're rolling here with uh, you know the only loss in the season to the Ottawa Senators so far. Otherwise, they've beaten everybody and are on an absolute mission here. Uh, the Leafs, of course, after losing Obey Kubel on waivers today, did recall Wayne Simmons. Not sure if he's drawing into the lineup tonight, but he's officially back on the NHL roster. Uh, the Senators have also recalled defenseman Jacob Bernard Docker. Um, there was some talk from Coach DJ Smith that they were bringing him up. Some guys were kind of nicked up a little bit, maybe looking to change things up a little bit after a bit of a losing streak here. Uh, they also said that he wasn't necessarily going to jump right into the lineup and apparently it doesn't look like he's playing tonight uh, as they do battle with the Philadelphia Flyers and of course it will be Claude Giroux's first game against his old team. Um, but essentially he says once they put him in, they want to give him a nice long look and they want to make sure he's in each other ready because I think they're thinking that you know they wait long enough to bring him up and he'll just stay. It's kind of the hope if everything plays out the way that they're hoping for. So we'll see how things go with JBD in Ottawa. Uh, the Florida Panthers have uh, recalled Alexi Hepp on the Emmy as well, so he should hopefully get a chance to play soon. Uh, with the uh, injury to Mackenzie Blackwood, the Devils have also recalled goaltender Akira Schmid. Uh, so he played six games last year. Um, see if he gets into some action on this recall. It'll depend, of course, on how long Blackwood is out. Uh, they had to then reassign Andreas Janssen to the minors to make room on the roster. So he didn't get to stay back up too long. Uh, staying with Ottawa for a minute as well, talking about JBD, uh, Josh Norris, who was out with a shoulder injury. And, of course, we've heard, you know, three months minimum could be much longer. Uh, looking at some options between surgery and rehab. And apparently Josh Norris has opted, which is totally reasonable and should probably be done all the time, to get a second opinion. That way he can kind of evaluate all the different recommendations decide which route he's going to go if surgery or rehab is best to get back and hopefully not have a recurring issue down the road. Um, a couple of prospects, too, I want to touch on quickly. The Coyotes have confirmed that Dylan Gunter will be sticking in the NHL. No big surprise. He's done relatively well. Uh, he's going to stick out the season in Arizona. And Shane Wright, of course, in Seattle, we talked about him a few days ago, talking about his usage, the fact that he's not getting a lot of playing time, Healthy scratch oftentimes as well. Uh, apparently there was talk about this on the last uh, 32 Thoughts segment uh, or with Jeff Merrick. So talking about the possibility that Shane Wright, um, prob they'll probably keep going the way they are here for a little while uh, with his usage for a few more weeks, uh, getting him into the lineup when they feel it's necessary or when they feel like it's going to help the team, I guess. Um, but uh, he, there is a clause that he can go to the American Hockey League on I'm not sure if it's a conditioning assignment or exactly what they can do, but there is a clause. They can get him to the American Hockey League, but only for 14 days. So don't be surprised if they do that maybe later in November. Get him a couple of weeks to go down there and play some big minutes under you know, a much more bigger opportunity. And then he's likely in December uh, going to get loaned to Team Canada for the World Juniors. So he likely will be gone from the crack in there for you know, probably a good six to seven weeks, I would think. So after that, after the juniors are over in January, they can reevaluate and determine if he's uh, going to go back to Seattle, finish up the season or what have you. I would think that at that point he probably would, but uh, we'll see how things go on the Shane right front. Now onto a couple of trade items before we wrap up the video. Uh, the Edmonton Oilers, of course, um, had lost the last couple of games. They've had, you know, a, a bit of a streaky season here so far. There was an athletic report that I was looking at talking about the possibility of them moving a forward out to be able to give more of an opportunity to youngster Dylan Holloway, uh, who's, you know, obviously been able to play some, but not getting a ton of opportunity, a ton of minutes. Uh, of course, they talked about the main candidates that you would likely see in that category, which would be Warren Fogle, uh, Kyler Yamamoto, or Jesse Pugliarvi. And they list uh, Fogle being the most likely. The fact that Yamamoto signed beyond the current season likely keeps him in Edmonton. And a lot of people are convinced, uh, based on all the different metrics and advanced stats, that Jesse Pugliarvi is uh, somebody who can help the Oilers regardless of what his uh, scoring stats are. He can play uh, more of a two-way game, and uh, his numbers are 
are good analytic wise to show that he doesn't, you know, give up a lot on the ice. So certainly Fogel appears to be the more likely player if they were going to do something like that. I'm not entirely convinced that they would or should right now. And I do understand this team has kind of had its moments this year where they've been really good and unstoppable and other, other times when they uh, just, you know, have had some rough games. But I do think that part of it is goaltending. Stuart Skinner's greatly outplayed Jack Campbell. I honestly wonder how they're feeling with that Campbell contract right now. I honestly thought it wasn't too bad when he first signed it based on his back history. I uh, was a little concerned over the term, but I didn't think that the uh, contract would be considered bad right away. I thought it might be, you know, a year, a couple of years down the road might be when it starts to look a little different. But we're only a month into this and he hasn't had a good start during his time in Edmonton. I mean, he hasn't been awful all the time, but he's had his games where it's just not there. So they, they need more from Campbell. And uh, I do think that that's uh, probably a bigger concern. But at the same time, uh, you know, with the way this team is structured, as much as Holloway, you know, you could make an argument that he might deserve to play a little bit more, but you don't want to really mess with your depth too much in a season when you're hoping to once again be a playoff team and hopefully again go on a longer run. So I'm not so sure we're going to see this move unless they really find a major opportunity for maybe a multiplayer swap where they can upgrade and feel like they're really a much better team at the end of the day. I don't know as much as they want Holloway to, to maybe have more of an impact. I'm not sure that giving up some depth is the way to do it. Now, when it comes to the Maple Leafs, uh, we talked about it in an article uh, a few days, or actually yesterday, about Eric Carlson maybe being uh, a trade piece in San Jose. Considering the hot start he's had, with the fact that you know the team itself isn't going to be a playoff team this year, they're going to be one of the bottom teams of the league, most likely. Does it make sense for them to try to trade him now that his value is much more higher than it has been during his tenure there? Yes, he's got a lot of money owing in that contract. Yes, he's got a lot of term left. But if they retained half, which is still a lot of money over a long period of time for them, is that something they would consider? I know the article was written by a Toronto-based media member, so certainly they mused over the idea of him going to the Leafs, but acknowledged that it wasn't overly likely and talked about some other options for Carlson being treated out of San Jose. But today on the Jeff Merrick show, or actually not today, the most recent Jeff Merrick show, which would have been yesterday, uh, Mike Fuda, of course, the former assistant general manager in the NHL, current member of the Sportsnet staff, was talking about the Leafs and how Eric Carlson wouldn't necessarily make sense for what they would probably need, that a guy that Jeff Merrick has been talking about as a good, uh, you know, stay at home study defenseman that he felt would be really good for the Leafs would be Carson Soucy in Seattle. We know that Carson Soucy's name last year at the NHL trade deadline came up quite a bit, and the uh, the Kraken came close to moving him from what we've understood. That they had lots of good conversations, there was lots of inquiries, some offers, but nothing really materialized to the point that GM Ron Francis wanted to pull the trigger. So certainly another defenseman to keep your eye on. He doesn't come with a crazy contract. He's good defensively. He can move the puck. He's nothing flashy. He's not a big name. But especially in the absence of Jake Muzzin, they could actually use his LTIR space to get a defenseman like Susie and not max it out and maybe even go after something else if they wanted to do that. So it gives them a more flexibility, not to mention that they'd have to send something to Seattle to offset things, of course, like I said, they lost Obey Kubel today. They called up Simmons. They'd still have to move the roster around a little bit to bring in a defenseman like that. But I would imagine in return that the Kraken would want something back. Maybe they take Justin Hall. I'm not sure. Um, obviously, Hall's had a tough season. But at the same time, the Leafs are very limited on a right shot D. So not really sure how, how uh, Kyle Dubas handles that situation. But I do agree, though, with the concept at least, that Carson Soucy, to me, is more of the type of defenseman that the Leafs would need. He's not going to come with that crazy contract, that crazy price tag. He's good in his own end, has some grit to him, some good size, and at the same time, he is a decent puck mover as well, so he's not going to hurt them offensively. I don't think they need a defenseman that's going to you know, score at a high rate. They need a defenseman who can just get the puck to the forwards to do their thing. Ultimately, they're the ones paid the big bucks to score the goals, and that's what they really need to rely on for the offense that they generally do. So to me, that would make an excellent fit, but it's hard to say where they go. Do you think the uh, sports center... Uh, team here is on to something with Carson Soucy to the Leafs. Do you think the Oilers will trade a forward and give a bigger role to Holloway? Let me know your thoughts as well as the whole Mitchell Miller tobacco in Boston. Let me know your thoughts. We'll talk about it further. If you're new to the channel, of course, make sure you subscribe and stick around. We'll keep you up to date with all the latest news, rumors, and analysis on all 32 NHL teams. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Mm -hmm.